Let's investigate two qubit gates. In this video, we're going to see the matrix representations of two qubit gates. We're also going to see symbolic representations of these gates, which are used in diagrams that depict quantum circuits. Anytime you want to construct a matrix representation of an operator in quantum mechanics, you have to choose a particular basis. In this video, I'm using the computational basis for a two qubit system. We have four basis vectors that form an orthonormal basis. They are denoted as 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. You can construct these states as tensor products of the orthonormal basis states of individual single qubit Hilbert space states. So for a single qubit Hilbert space, that is a two-dimensional Hilbert space, we have two states that are needed to span the entire state. And we label those as 0 and 1. And if we consider a single qubit Hilbert space over here and another single qubit Hilbert space over here, we can combine those into a larger four-dimensional Hilbert space that describes a two-qubit system. And now we need four basis vectors to span the entire space. And so each of those basis vectors are just tensor products of the basis vectors for the individual single qubit systems. So now we have the computational basis for a two qubit Hilbert space. And what we're going to do is have a look at unitary operators. So these matrices over here, they are unitary operators that act on states. And what would the matrix representation of states look like? They would be column vectors. A ket state would be represented as a column vector with four entries, because this is a four-dimensional Hilbert space. And a bra would be represented as a row vector, which has four entries, but all of the entries are complex conjugated. So we take the transpose, and we also take the complex conjugate of all of the entries. That's how we go from a ket to a bra. In the language of kets and bras, that is Dirac notation. So let's get started by looking at this matrix representation over here. I have conveniently divided this up into four quadrants. You can see that there are only non-zero entries in the top left quadrant and the bottom right quadrant. Over here, we can identify the identity matrix for a single qubit Hilbert space. So this is the two by two identity matrix. It has ones along the diagonal and zeros on the off diagonal. What about over here? Over here, we have the swapped over version. These two little columns have been swapped around. This is the Pauli X operator. And the Pauli X operator is one of the Pauli matrices. It is analogous to the classical NOT gate from Boolean algebra. And it is sometimes also called the bit flip. When this 2 by 2 matrix acts on a single qubit state, it has the effect of swapping the zeros and the ones. So the zero state goes to 1, and the 1 state goes to 0. Always remember that these zeros and ones on these states are just labels. We could choose any label, but it is convention in quantum information uh, to choose 0 and 1. So that is what happens for a single qubit Hilbert space. But what are we dealing with over here? We're dealing with a four-dimensional Hilbert space that describes two qubits. And in this special type of unitary transformation, we're actually dealing with a controlled unitary. And in particular, we're dealing with a controlled X or controlled not. So if we look at this symbolic representation, we see one qubit up over here and another qubit over here. Qubit 1 is acting as the control qubit, and qubit 2 is acting as the target qubit. That is what this symbol depicts. And this symbol is equivalent to this matrix representation. So this is also called the C naught, or the controlled naught, or the controlled X gate. And I have specifically specified these little uh, indices over here, where we have 1 and 2. That is telling us that qubit 1 is acting as the control, and qubit 2 is acting as the target. So what will this actually do to a general state of this two-qubit system? Well, it will produce, it will have the effect 
of a not gate dependent on the state of the control qubit. So we have a qubit that is controlling the action of another qubit. That is a controlled unitary. And we can actually generalize this, and instead of putting a, a, a Pali X gate over here, we could put a general unitary gate. So that would apply this unitary to qubit 2 dependent on the state of this control qubit. So that is what is meant by a controlled gate. We have the controlled not gate over here. And this is a very, very important gate in quantum information. We can use this gate to construct many other useful gates. So this matrix representation is only valid if qubit 1 is acting as the control and qubit 2 is acting as the target. What if we have the reverse? What if we swap the role of these two qubits? Then we would have this diagram over here. Qubit 2 is now acting as the control and qubit 1 is the target. So we have to rearrange the zeros and the ones in this matrix representation. So you can see that now the ones are in slightly different positions to what we had over here. So this is what happens when you swap these guys around. Now you might think what would happen is you would just swap this quadrant and this quadrant around. You would have a poly X up here and an identity down here. That is not what happens. What happens is this rearrangement of ones and zeros. And we will see this in later videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. We'll see actually where this comes from. We can define all of these four by four matrices as the sum of Pauli matrix tensor products. And that will allow us to clearly see how to construct these matrices. But this video shows us the matrix representations in their form so we can see what is going on. And we can see that the indices over here in this notation have also been swapped over. This is telling us that qubit 2 is acting as the control qubit, and qubit 1 is acting as the target qubit. It is the reverse of what we have over here. So that is the controlled NOT gate. We have two versions of the controlled NOT gate, which uh, change depending on which qubit is acting as the control and which qubit is acting as the target. And in general, if you have different types of controlled unitaries, the uh, qubit that is being targeted is going to have the effect of that unitary acting on it only dependent on the state of the control qubit. So we're using one qubit to influence another qubit. That is what this gate is actually doing. Let's have a look at another type of controlled unitary transformation, and that is this over here, the controlled Z. This is sometimes called the control phase gate because the Pauli Z operator for a single qubit system is a special case of the phase shift operator. It is a phase shift operator that corresponds to a sine flip. So this minus one over here is actually a, a special case of a phase factor, which has the form e to the i phi. And if we choose that e to the i phi to be pi or minus pi in the complex exponential, then we will get minus one. So we can choose either plus pi or minus pi. Both are equivalent. They're going to give us minus one over here. So this little quadrant in the bottom right is now the Pauli Z operator. You can see it, this matrix has the same format that we have up here. We have the identity in the top left and then a unitary in the bottom right. So what will this do? This will introduce a phase flip. It will flip the sign of the one one component. So these matrices are uh, constructed with that computational basis. So we can see that this would be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And we have the same thing for the rows and the columns. So this uh, little position over here uh, and this entry in the matrix corresponds to 1, 1. And that is actually going to tell us that we have to introduce a sign flip. So this sign flip will occur conditional on the state of the control bit. So we have a, well, I should say qubit. These are quantum analogs of classical bits. This diagram over here represents the CZ gate or the control phase gate. It will introduce that flip dependent on the state of the other qubit. And you can see that it actually doesn't matter which one we call the control and which one we call the target. For the control not gate, it does matter. This is a different matrix representation for the two cases. 
If we relabel one and two, we actually have to rearrange the ones. But the control Z gate is a lot more special. It actually is exactly the same. If we relabel the states, if we swap the role of the first qubit and the second qubit and we switch them around, it will actually be the exact same matrix. So that is why this symbol is used. And what we will see in the next few videos in the quantum mechanics playlist is that we can actually express the controlled Z gate as a controlled NOT gate or a controlled X gate. If we sandwich that controlled X gate between two Hadamards. So this Hadamard operator and this Hadamard operator are single qubit gates. These guys are only acting on this qubit over here. But this controlled unitary is combining this, it's a combined effect on both of these qubits. And you can see that sandwiching something between two Hadamards has the effect of swapping the language of phase flips and bit flips. We saw that in some of the single qubit videos and the operators for single qubits. If you sandwich Pali X or Pali Z between two Hadamard gates, it has the effect of swapping the two. So Z goes to X and X goes to Z. And that is exactly what we're doing over here. We're taking a controlled X and we're turning it into a controlled Z. And we can equivalently do that for this reversed version over here, as long as we apply the Hadamards on this target qubit. So the Hadamards have to sandwich the target qubit in order for this to work. You can't just sw swap the Hadamards and put them wherever they need to be. They have to be exactly here where the target qubit is. So that's our way of con converting this X into a Z. And we can also go back, we can convert Z to X. So that is why the controlled NOT gate is very important because you can actually use that to construct this controlled phase or controlled Z gate. And these are the schematic diagrams that we would use to represent such a transformation or such a circuit. And what would actually, what would this correspond to in matrix notation? This over here, the matrix representation of this is a two by two matrix. It is a Hadamard gate. And over here we have the identity. Implicitly, we have the identity operator over here. So to get a matrix representation for this and for this, we would have to take the tensor product of the identity operator with the Hadamard. So we would have identity, tensor product, Hadamard, identity, tensor product, Hadamard. And those matrices would sandwich the matrix representation that we have over here. What about this case? We would have to sandwich this matrix representation in between Hadamard tensor product identity and Hadamard tensor product identity. Know that those are, these matrices are not the same. If you take the identity tensor product with the Hadamard, that is a different matrix to if you take the, the Hadamard and you tensor product with the identity. So this is a slightly different combination, but that will give you the exact same control Z gate. And we will see this in later videos. We will prove why these identities work. Now let's have a look at this swap gate. The swap gate can also be constructed as uh, a sequence of these controlled NOT gates. If we choose this controlled NOT gate over here, so that's this matrix, and then we sandwich that, this matrix, in between two copies of these guys, we will actually get the equivalent of this matrix over here. And you can try this matrix multiplication. Try multiplying this by this and then this. Or you could try this combination. That will also work. And uh, if you do the matrix multiplication, it is a little tedious. There are a lot of entries that you have to consider. But eventually, you will uh, collapse down to the swap gate. And you can see that the swap gate is a little different. It doesn't have that form where we have the identity and then a unitary over here. So it's slightly different because it has ones occurring in these quadrants as well. And the effect of the swap gate is to switch information between two qubits. And that is why this symbol and this symbol are sometimes used to visually depict what is going on. So the swap gate can be represented in these two ways in terms of the controlled NOT gate. And remember that we don't just have one type of controlled NOT gate, we have two types of controlled NOT gate depending on which qubit is acting as the target and which is acting as the control. So anytime you see this type of diagram, you, you need to recognize that all of these guys are just representing matrices. So you can also write this in the language of matrices. And if you have a sequence of these gates that you're applying to several qubits, you can represent them as matrix multiplication. You first apply this matrix, then another matrix, and then a third matrix. 
But it is also important to remember the convention as to where you're going from. The convention in these diagrams is we go from left to right. So we would apply this matrix first, then this matrix, then this ma matrix. But for matrix multiplication and applying on, on these column vectors, we would have first apply the one that's furthest to the right, and then the one that's the furthest to the left. And also we can use the associative property of matrix multiplication to collapse those uh, matrix products together, and we can just turn them into one big matrix and apply that onto the column vector. So now what we're going to do in the next video in the quantum mechanics playlist is have a look at where these matrix representations actually come from. We're going to represent all of these matrices in terms of tensor products of the Pauli matrices. And we're going to see some very interesting properties. We're going to look at some inner products that emerge from the trace. And we're also going to see why these circuit identities work. So these are visual depictions of what the matrices are doing. And we will see another way of looking at this is in terms of Dirac notation and writing down tensor products of matrices. And these operators can just be written as letters where we uh, think of that letter as a general operator that can be represented either as a symbol or in its matrix representation. So you can find all the other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist if you click over here.